I, I don't know I'm going to go with the English or Korean because we have four speakers here is Korean and three is <laughs> international. So let's go with English for start and if everything goes well then we'll stay. Otherwise we'll turn into the Korean. Um, today we're going to talk about the future of payments. When we talk about the cryptocurrency, is that real or fake? Oh, can we use it? Volatility? The value? What should we do with it? Now we are inviting all the handsome and good-looking and leadership people here. They are payment solution, payment platform, and payment device people. I'm so happy to hear to talk about this first question. Uh, before we go with the question, let's go around the around and introduce ourselves. Uh, hi, um, my name is Daniel Kim. Um, I'm, I'm CSO of uh, the FugeX uh, project. Um, the FugeX, actually, we are just providing uh, the most convenient cryptocurrency payment solution. Um, actually, uh, by using a FugeX card, you can make uh, the cryptocurrency transaction at any retail stores uh, without changing any infrastructure whatsoever. Thank you. Uh, 안녕하세요. Hey guys, uh, I'm, I'm Bobby Bao, co-founder and managing director of Monaco. So we are a cryptocurrency wallet and a, a Visa, uh, Visa card. So we uh, provide a user the access to cryptocurrency with full compliance. So user on our platform can buy, sell, exchange cryptocurrency. And you can use Monaco Visa card to spend your cryptocurrency anywhere Visa accepted. Hi guys, uh, I'm Jake, uh, co-founder and CEO of RAID3, which I just shared earlier. So RAID3 focuses a little bit different from payments. We are on settlements and liquidity, and also uh, for credit. That means for businesses that requires both settlement needs and credit in terms for loans. Hey everyone, my name is Sten. I'm co-founder and chairman of Hadara, a securities and utilities exchange. Um, we have a centralized and a decentralized part. Everything is fueled by community-driven um, content generation, and we have a heavy focus on data analysis and algorithmic trading. We've looked at um, finding settlement and payment solutions specifically because we think that um, an exchange of value between users on an exchange or in the real world and using it as a payment is very similar. So there's a lot of similarities, I think, even though we are an exchange or a payment solution. Hello, uh, I'm the Kevin Chang Gun Lee. Uh, uh, we are making the cold wallet hardware, the uh, car type of uh, uh, cryptocurrency wallet service providers. And uh, uh, we are making the first Korean company, I think, to make a, uh, make a uh, based on the secure element uh, chipset, to making the hardware wallet. Thank you. Hi, <clears throat> my name is Sang Jae Seo. I'm CEO and founder of PayX Foundation in Singapore and Korea. Uh, we do provide the coin-based, I mean, you know, crypto-based payment processing service. Uh, we take the, all the coins from out of our partners, then we liquidate the coins into fiat currency as a cash, then we deliver the cash to our merchant. Um, not like, you know, other project, we are focusing on you know, liquidating and delivering the cash directly to our merchant. We, are, we do not rely on our legacy our payment processing service. We do provide our own payment processing service. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, so let's just start our talking. So today we're gonna to talk about the payments, most of all. So before we go into our three major questions, is really payment possible with the cryptocurrency? Anybody? Um, yes or not. Um, actually, um, it's very hard to um, uh, make a um, direct uh, transaction with the cryptocurrency itself. Um, I think this is kind of very early stage. So um, we do definitely need uh, some kind of a medium body to make an exchange from the crypto to fiat. So that um, actually the merchant side, whoever, whoever takes the, the money, um, have uh, like a feel of the security, right? But that, that's because of the volatility of the, uh, the cryptocurrency Secure. itself. Yes. All right, anybody else? So I think for crypto to be accepted or widely used, um, I think the recent trend for the last two quarter was uh, stablecoin, right? We've looked at examples of a uh, basis circle, Tether. You know, these are the dollar back stablecoin. Um, for every, you know, for, for it to be actually widely adopted, the mechanism on how would you make a token stable is uh, really important. And we are looking at, uh, I think one of the very successful cases, in my opinion, is a DAI. 
right? Make a DAO's uh, die. Yeah. So for payments, if we want crypto to be uh, widely adopted, accepted the same as fiat, uh, there needs to be a really wonderful and uh, mechanism behind how would you control the vol uh, how volatile tokens are. And uh, second is a business adoption, right? How would you once you solve the vol uh, volatile issue? How would you convince businesses to actually take this in, right? Because uh, yeah, at the end of the day, fiat is more safe in everybody's eye. Yeah, I think that's the key issues. Thank you for your answer. So I think you... it's uh, it's highly possible uh, with Monaco app and uh, uh, Visa card. For example, we within our app we provide the users seven different fiat currency and the full cryptocurrency, including Bitcoin. Ether, our own coin, MCO, and Binance coin, BNB. And we were adding more cryptocurrency around the world onto our wallet. And the user can convert crypto, cryptocurrency into fiat currency as long as they want at the perfect interbank exchange, change rate. And they can use Monaco, Visa, Metal Card anywhere around the world. That's for B2C, our payment solution. I think the uh, perception is now the change, you know, quite uh, rapidly. The back in like, uh, you know, about a year or two years ago, the people now, now realized about the, what the cryptocurrencies are. Now people are accepting the cryptocurrencies as a kind of a payment. And uh, uh, the other thing is uh, the, the, the security. Uh, security matter is uh, very important. And uh, I think the device matter is, is now crypto, I mean, client level of uh, cryptocurrency is now much more secure in terms of providing wallet or some other applications. This is now, I think the people now understanding acceptance of a payment as cryptocurrency is much more viable. I think Thanks. if Jay, I take a, a combination of what I've heard is security, um, the, the, the need for a good mechanism of, of a stable coin, and then the, the multitude of having different, um, say, fiat currencies. But I think if we look from our exchange point of view, uh, one big issue um, and I think that will be solved in the future, but one big issue is liquidity because you, everyone needs to solve, um, say, anyone providing a payment needs to exchange not just from, say, the core larger um, blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, and other ones, but also all the minor coins. And I think the liquidity problem is something that um, doesn't know a lot of solutions yet, um, but will probably be a big challenge in the future. And if you can solve that, then you can talk about having a true payment because there's no difference between using a dollar or Singapore dollar or uh, a pesos or anything else. Yeah. <clears throat> Direct crypto payment between two individual digital wallet is quite really good for you know, just sending money. But for the payment, um, normal you know, structure of a blockchain is not really suitable from my, from my perception. So that's why we are creating um, you know, coin or crypto-based liquidating process, we are not relying on the legacy you know, payment processing service. So we are cre creating that by on ourselves. So um, direct payment between two individual wallet. And so when it comes to the you know, payment service for in this case, um, it's really hard to get refunded for, from you know, the merchant, even, even you know, Let's say, you know, I, I actually paid for a you know, certain amount of money in coins, but someone, you know, as a merchant, without, you know, any meeting with them, so it's almost impossible to get refunded. So to pre prevent this kind of situation, and as a third party, I mean, uh, you know, financial institution must conduct as a, you know, uh, mediatory service. So, uh, all the payment companies getting more similar, uh, creating backend platform on chain and off chain mixed one. So that kind of things is it can be kind of a future of a payment. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, personally, I believe payment is the key to reach out to the public. We talked about the technology. We talked about the smart contract. We talked about all different things. But that's for others, for company, for public. If we succeed people will recognize blockchain and cryptocurrency as a payment. So let's talk about our major question first. So we are all using payment system already with a credit card, with a mobile system, 
But now, why do you believe that blockchain is necessary for our block, uh, this payment system? So I think uh, it's completely blockchain payment, whatever B2C or B2B, blockchain payment is a better version of Swift. There's three points I can mention about. The first point is for blockchain payment, the settlement can be finished within minutes. Secondly, 24 hours, seven days a week, any country around the world, you can, you can, do, the, you can do the transactions. So like, when you do the blockchain payment, it will generate, a instant, it will instantaneous generate the address of the receiver. So compared to the traditional payment, for the traditional payment, it takes us several business days for the international wire to finish the transaction. So I believe for the blockchain payment, it's a way better version of SWIFT. So just to add on, to help the SWIFT uh, hit early on, so SWIFT has came out with the new GPI, right? The Global Payment Innovation this year. I think their first phase has already kicked launched, uh, 2017. Uh, it's no longer a few business days, I think, but they are, they are doing same day. Yeah, but crypto is real time. Yes. I think that's the beauty of it, right? So can SWIFT do it in real time? I'm, I'm not too sure. Maybe in, I don't know, 20, 2025, in about 10 years? I don't know, eight, eight years. So the difference comes in same day versus real time. Uh, and the most important thing, in my opinion, with the SWIFT GPI, since we're talking about SWIFT network here, it's only really available for larger financial institutions. Even um, smaller private banks don't get access to the SWIFT network. That's how uh, exclusive they are, right? But for Monaco, I just want to quote Monaco here. I mean, you, all you guys can use it today, right? Real time, and then you get an interbank rate and things like that. So in a bigger point of view, uh, decentralized payments means no matter you are like I myself or you know, I'm any kind of big banks, we get the same kind of uh, treatment. I think that was the biggest uh, power for when it comes to decentralization, especially for payments. Yeah, yeah uh, I, think, uh, I think all the audience here must understand that there's something wrong with the finance institution, conventional way of institutions. You know that the visa transaction fees and the foreign exchange commissions, which is uh, higher than the, you normally expected, right? This is why uh, we've been believing there's something wrong, we got to change. But we know uh, we are, however, until the introduction of blockchain uh, come, come out, uh, we never know how to make it possible, it's true. And then the, because blockchain enables us to uh, make it much more safer and uh, scalability and uh, of course, uh, uh, the scalability and other issues too. But the, somehow we have uh, make uh, a new uh, introduction of lightning or some other technologies evolving and to make sure that our transaction between P2B uh, through the blockchain much more safer and the easier of use and the scalability all, all get together. This is why blockchain is makes the most sense to uh, give more, I mean, the security in terms of finance transactions. Okay, so now if we talk about the payments, you just say something about the credit card part and so Visa Master. So biggest hurdle that we are having is a fee problem. I mean, we have a delay problem also, but let's talk about the fee. So biggest hurdle, hurdle is fee. So with your application, do you have any like perfect solution for it? Is that better than existing systems? I think uh, the fee is, you know, because there are competitions now, right? right? Even now, I just heard about the now Visa Master, they uh, open up the debit, you know, transaction to the even startup tech startups to open up. Not in Korea, Korea is still regulated by the, you know, big state run, you know, bank. But uh, aside from Korea, there are many startup tech startup companies that are providing Visa MasterCard service to the public. I think now it's a really matter of time within a couple of years now from that. I think uh, now is a Visa, Visa Master they are offering like a two or three percent, three or two or three percent for each transaction, plus and the commission for foreign exchanges. But because of now blockchain, I mean the blockchain cryptocurrencies now is evolving, they're, they're, the fee is now lower. And besides, and now it's lightning, the radio network, that's always trying to reduce the scalability, I mean the maximize scalability, and together with uh, reduce the cost. This is, this is why we believe that within a couple of years now, the fee is much lower than your, 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 your expectations. So you're saying that compared to the current fee 
Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, current right. fees, you know, much. Let's new. let's go around just once. We'll start with the few decks. Um, I don't see the um, actual the biggest hurdle about the uh, the blockchain and cryptocurrency. The payment solution is fee. Um, I think um, that's about the um, the limitation of the acceptance. Um, if somebody can um, actually uh, purchase something uh, with their like either Bitcoin directly, uh, they will gladly pay the fee, even though that's very high, right? Uh, but the thing is, um, the volatility of the, um, the, the cryptocurrency itself, um, no merchant would like to actually take the cryptocurrency at this stage. Um, even um, a big camera in Japan, um, they're actually accepting Bitcoin, right? But um, the, the, because of the dramatic, the, the price drop down of the, uh, the Bitcoin, they lost uh, the billion dollars um, uh, in return, right? Um, so I think that created um, kind of the limitation of the acceptancy. I think that's the kind of the biggest hurdle um, to adopting cryptocurrency as like a mainstream of the, the payment. Um, so in order to uh, maximize the uh, acceptancy at this stage, uh, we have to dealing with the legacy payment network and payment system so that um, the actual the merchant who take the cryptocurrency, they are not taking cryptocurrency, they're taking a fiat so that they can even more feel secure uh, about the, what they are taking. Um, so um, that's the kind of the project we are doing and the, the Monaco's are doing. Um, so uh, we are kind of intermediate kind of the body uh, who are actually making exchange from the, um, the crypto to fiat. And also there's another kind of obstacle, uh, which is kind of technical side, right? Um, that's already been proven by the, some of the, um, the, the traditional uh, the payment systems, uh, such as like a simple payment solution like a Kakao or Payco in Korea, right? Um, um, in order to adopting a new technology like NFC payment, mobile payment, um, they have to invest huge money onto the, uh, the terminal itself, right? The Payco, uh, they invest a billion dollars to making an additional terminal at the retail store, but still, the penetration rate is very low, um, even the Apple Pay themselves, right? Um, so I think this is kind of the trend stage, um, but um, so that, that's the reason why actually our project I'm um, actually dealing with the legacy payment uh, the platform, um, but sooner or later um, the the technology wide and the, the price of the cryptocurrency is more stable, then uh, the more merchant will accept the cryptocurrency and they're supported by the uh, very good uh, blockchain based technology kind of payment solution, then they can be widely adopted. Yeah, but um, this is kind of very early stage of the uh, the, the cryptocurrency right, so payments. Daniel, thank you for your answer. So he's saying that. Market penetration is more big huddle than fee. So anybody else can add? So re regarding the fees part, from our company perspective, uh, we don't feel it's a hurdle uh, for any Monaco users. If you transfer money within the app, there's no fee at all. And we provide the user um, Monaco Visa metal card with no annual fees at all. And uh, for the money, exchange, we provide a user the best, the perfect interbank exchange rate. So there's no fees for, from the Monaco perspective. And uh, at the same time, I agree with what he said. The fee uh, is not a big hurdle for the future of payments cryptocurrency today. I think how we increase more user cases, how we uh, utilize the, the network effect of payment of cryptocurrency are the more critical points for all the people here to explore. I would probably, um, when we were building our exchange and we had to make a decision between, okay, will we build a centralized or a decentralized exchange? We came across many of the issues that US payment providers also face. Um, and I think we took a step back and we looked at like, okay, everyone wants to pay less fees, but why is that fee there in the first place? Um, I think the fee that you pay, and if you look at just pure Bitcoin mining, um, the fee that we pay is essentially um, a value that's captured and the, the miners allowing us to have what we call state. And state is the combination of all the balances and all the information on transactions and, and balances on every wallet. Now, if we want to reduce the fees, essentially we are accepting that the, say the state, we're paying for that state. If I want to pay less for that state, for example, I, want to, I don't want to pay this much, that essentially means I'm saying, I don't want someone 
to manage my state, but that means I don't want someone else to manage my Bitcoin amount that I have on my wallet. Because, I mean, I'm taking a huge step back maybe, but um, essentially you're saying the fees that you want to decrease is you saying, I don't want my balance to stay on the state because that's what you're paying for. You're paying for that huge ledger. So if you want to decrease future-wise, you want to decrease the, the fees, I think we have to come up with different ways of how do we pay the people that create that state in the network. And I mean, there's a few decentralization projects and protocols that find solutions for this. But I think, for example, as payment providers such as Monaco, you get paid for providing that value in a different way. If we can find solutions for blockchain where we can still have the ledger with the balance, but we don't have to capture that value in the transaction for blocks, that's a solution for reducing fees but finding value in a different way. And from an exchange point of view, there's different ways of doing that, but I think from a payment point of view, they're probably very similar. Thank you. So, Jay, do you want to add anything yeah, to this? Um, yeah, for the transaction fee, it happens all the time. Whenever I send my coins to other wallet, um, to overcome this problem, um, you know, PX, we take the, all the coins in a you know, holding account. Then, you know, no matter what kind of coin our uh, customer wants to pay or send, um, but for that transaction, there is no real transaction in our platform. We just use uh, um, off-chain based in you know, a database. That's why there is no actual fee for uh, blockchains network because you know, uh, when we use the blockchain network, we got to pay for that as a compensation for miners. Then um, we are creating Pintech platform, which is exactly working with you know, commercial bank and many bank, net bank networks. So uh, when we operate all the transaction in off-chain based database, there is no actual uh, transaction, that's why we can reduce all the fees for our customers and merchant. Yeah, that is you know, our trial. Then um, the blockchain transaction is really good for, you know, for example, you know, substitution for you know, Swift, but no one uses Swift as a payment. The sending money is, and you know, payment is totally different. The, to create a payment network, as a third party, Financial institution must conduct their role. That's my opinion. Okay, thank you. So let's go a little bit off track now. Let's go to public level. Um, so if I go to the convenience store, I have a credit card, I have a cash, I have a Bitcoin. How can we convince people to use more Bitcoin than credit card or paper cash? Why not? Um, if we just provide the uh, same usability as actually you pay with uh, your fiat currency, your fiat credit card, then um, if somebody has uh, like a Bitcoin in their wallet, but um, uh, without having kind of any exchange, right? They can simply just pay at the uh, store, uh, like uh, uh, using a credit card. I think the people will be glad to pay. You know? right. yeah. uh, I've been going around the world and seeing many different cultures. Some cultures <laughs> love credit cards. Some cultures love just paper cash. Now we are jumping into cryptocurrency. How are we gonna do this? Uh, so the three things, right? Cash, credit, and bit, uh, crypto. That's, I mean, I like, it, I like to pay with Ethereum more, <laughs> but because uh, Bitcoin is slow and like costly, right? But so if it's a if it's a if it's a normal like a thirty-five to forty-year-old, you know, a lady, doesn't understand that much, right? I would say um, the other two, you are you might get cheated, you might be fraud. Credit card, uh, you know, in my, uh, you only know how much you pay at the end of the month when the bill comes, right? For the cash, are you sure you are holding a, like a legitimate, you know, piece of paper? I mean, if I'm in, uh, like, I'm in Korea, I'm Singaporean, right? So I'm in Korea. I have no idea how do I actually differentiate that thing. But what I can be sure of at every point in time is hash rate. The hash rate don't lie, guys. When you transfer, I transfer the ether to you. Uh, I mean, I don't memorize. 32 to 64 digit, but I memorized the last four and uh, first four. So it's 0x, b8, and then 6, 8, 3, 7. You can't doubt that, right? I think that's the, the in the future, like seven, maybe five to seven years, uh, there's the, the, 
that's where crypto is really going to be widely adopted because um, there's no way to deny that this thing did not happen. <laughs> that's, that's it, right? I paid you. This is the eight-digit hash rate for four from the back. Trust it, take it, and not. Cash, there's always doubt. You know, credit, I have no idea how much until the end of the month. Yeah, I think that's the easiest way, at least for payments to, at, for today, to convince someone to use uh, crypto, right? So, yeah, I, I think... Uh, so, uh, so, I think uh, uh, for whatever payment method, I think all the people here, you guys are... Uh, much smarter than ours, we will give you the chance to choose. For sometimes you maybe use cash, sometimes use credit or debit cards, sometimes use a cryptocurrency. I think the customers, we believe the customers are smart enough to choose whatever method they like. So for us, we just want to do our best to make sure there's more user cases adding our platform. So for you guys to use our card, your wallet more conveniently, and it's totally up to you guys to decide. Sometimes, oh, I want to use cash. Sometimes I want to use cryptocurrency. For example, when a cryptocurrency market is, 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 is beer, maybe it's good to use fiat, right? You hold the, the coins. When the market is, 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 is boo, so you guys maybe want to use crypto. So it's, it's, so, it's, 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 it's up to you guys. It's not up to, it's, we don't want to push you guys to use all use cryptocurrency. I think, I think our customers are very smart enough to do the best way, and we provide the best service for you guys. Um, I would like to jump in on the 45-year-old lady story, and, and if you ask on uh, what, what regions. Um, I think when we looked at, uh, for the exchange, where we would f like start as a stronger presence, um, we mainly looked at like how the community originally, because the community is a strong part of our exchange, and we looked at like where would this community need this the most? And I think we're all operating or, or answering this question from a privileged position. Um, we don't have to think on the fact, hey, will the money that I have cash or that I have in my bank account that's linked to my credit card, will that money tomorrow still have the same value? Because that's backed by a Korean economy or a U United States economy or a European com economy. Um, I think a, a wiser part would be Let's look at countries like Venezuela, Colombia, um, in Africa. There's a much bigger question at hand there where there is a huge volatility, where is it, there is a need of a stable coin, and the current stable coin that they're using is dollar. Widely in Africa, everyone's using dollars. Widely spread in, in, in South America, they're all using dollars because their own currency is devaluating like, on a continuous basis. Plus, um, the ownership. Is that money fake or not? That's, even, that's not even a question that money can be stolen by corrupt politicians, corrupt, um, it could be stolen by anyone, and you don't have that ownership over it. So I think um, the, the real adoption and the drive will not necessarily come from um, the privileged world, but it will much, I mean, it will come from there, but the, the, the much stronger direction will come from countries where they need the, the core infrastructure of blockchain the most, and that's having ownership your, of your assets, um, having an immutable ledger, um, having transparency, but also having a lack of corruption. And I think if you look geographically, countries where on an infrastructural and governmental level, that's, there's a huge lack of these, say, layers, I, I think that will be a much stronger drive. And we chose to like, educate those communities much stronger um, as a part of our exchange, and, and, and I think that's where the real drive will come from, and also the true adoption. Okay. Um. <clears throat> So the question was, you know, how to use your crypto in your wallet rather than your credit card, right? So um, all the payment company and crypto company we are facing to the, you know, the, you know, how the big hurdle because we need to change our customers and you know, customer behaviors because uh, people do not carry their crypto in a wallet. So first thing they have to do, they need to take or remove their cryptocurrency into their wallet or, or you know, call the wallet. So Fujax is a really good you know, way to use and you know, provide them the user experience to, to create you know, the real payment experience in, in anywhere. So and, and the other companies are trying to provide all the payment experience such as in you know, a X, they are focusing on POS system, and we have different idea on that. So 
we, we want to bring all the coins in our platform, and we want to support all the payment companies, such as you know, FundiX or FugeX or the, our, you know, Monaco as well. So we are focusing on how to utilize and you know, create a you know, banking platform can be used for any purpose of a payment. So um, that's our you know, vision, and, and based on that, we are creating our you know, payment network in multiple countries and try to be connected with multiple number of cryptocurrency exchanges and also based on that and you know regulations we are trying to get I mean acquire all the eligible financial license to handle this business in multiple countries all right let's jump into the last question so are we trying to build a new infrastructure or are we just getting on top of existing infrastructure. So let's go around. Fugex, you, you may start, I guess. Um, frankly speaking, um, actually we are using um, the legacy uh, payment networks uh, to maximize its adoption. Um, we do believe that adoption is the uh, most critical um, to be a mainstream of the payment uh, with the cryptocurrency. Um, but um, uh, sooner or later, uh, we're also building up some of the uh, our kind of the closed loop kind of payment solution, which you only um, using under um, the the main net. Um, so, but um, um, I just keep um, explaining this um, um, at this stage um, in order to make a payment uh, uh, with the, by providing the same um, the the payment habit of the people, right? Um, um, is you have to deal with the, uh, the legacy payment system and legacy payment solution. Um, um, it's very hard to change the people's perception, right? Even though I do have a um, Samsung Pay on my mobile phone, right? I still uh, paying by my credit card, right? So um, uh, that's why I think the, the, the PayX providing such a uh, different kind of the, uh, the end payment solution, uh, the mobile wallet and the, the card and everything. Same as the Monaco, um, so uh, we have to keep the uh, the same um, the payment habit. Um, that's why uh, at the moment uh, we are just dealing with the, the legacy payment platform. Yeah. So Bobby, so how about Monaco? I think uh, Monaco team has the capability to do both. Uh, uh, I view compliance as our key competitive advantage. Also, we uh, we maintain compliance as our key goal. Uh, at the same time, we also being very innovative. So you can see we work with Visa to provide a Monaco Visa deb uh, debit card. We also, uh, you know, our tech team develop a very cool Monaco wallet to provide the user uh, full stop service, uh, innovative service, very good user experience service to the crypto cryptocurrency users. So I think uh, we can do both. Um. On an infrastructure level, right? Uh, anything else that's not financial, which is uh, like information, our code, some example, probably like um, ELF, you know, cloud computing, uh, any other things that's not financial, uh, it can be a brand new. But for financial, it's definitely going to be a hybrid because uh, at the end of the day, uh, I think earlier on, the future of finance had a great talk. Uh, it's about the trust, right? And the branding and the cust custody, right? Do you actually allow someone to hold you know, your money? or like in, in other aspect, anything that's your asset. Uh, in, the, in the next future that you know, I personally can foresee, it's gonna be a hybrid model. That means uh, we either help existing trusted brands to do it better, or you know, uh, we help to include those that they exclude. Yeah, I think that's quite a, I think that's my summary. Yeah. Yeah, I think, that's a um, I think that's a really good approach and it's probably very similar. Um, we as an exchange, we like directly hold not just payment assets, but we hold trading assets. Um, it's, it, it is a, it's a risk and it's a responsibility. So that's why we also chose to have, say, a centralized and a decentralized part. So we allow users to have that option uh, and, and, and choose themselves. Now, when it comes to what solution, like should we build something ourselves, we've, we've heavily looked at it. Um, I think it's too soon. It's too soon to predict uh, what the best solution will be. And I think most of us will probably have a very um, agnostic approach to um, either your own solution or solutions of others. I think the best solution will come forward based on... on if you ask me, is there a good decentralized uh, exchange protocol? Uh, no. 
will there be in the next year? Uh, I hope, probably, no. Um, there's amazing ideas, but there's no solutions yet. No one can use them to pay. No one can use them to create a wallet and, and, and have exchanges happen there. So I think it's too soon to make a judgment on, yes, I will build here or I will build there. I think we are in the, uh, the middle of a migration or transition period uh, because, uh, I mean, the finance institution is a kind of regulations on the regulation. Even Korea is a lot of regulations in force. Uh, because of that, uh, somehow we have all these temptations, you know, trying to uh, some shaking hands with a visa master. On the other hand, because you know we are blockchain is evangelist, right? So that we are somehow trying to make an old transaction to a P2P transaction through, uh, you know, my uh, as I say, I'm the banker. Also, I have account holders. So I'm trying to uh, minimize, you know, middleman, trying to maximize the profit as possible. But however, because financial institutions, aside from financial institutions, we have a much more decentralized, however, but because of certain characteristics and the cultural differences, we somehow need uh, some, some mingle together with uh, financial institutions and some uh, conventional legacy system. But we will overcome maybe well, past the following five or seven years or 10 years. At some point, uh, we know that uh, uh, decentralization of uh, cryptocurrency can be ultimate goal, ultimate, I mean, solutions for our financial industry. To create um, systematic integration with legacy banking platform or legacy financial institutions, um, technically we are developing our system um, with technically integrated with our commercial bank, the multiple commercial bank as well, and on the other hand, um, our backend system is also integrated with cryptocurrency exchanges by using their uh, RESTful APIs. Um, and also we provide uh, robust RESTful APIs for our merchant, for our partners, um, especially for you know, fintech companies. So when, you know, to provide them, um, we assign the virtual account to receive you know, fiat currency and and also, um, we, you know, exchange fiat currency to uh, fiat, fiat to crypto, crypto to crypto, crypto to fiat, and all the payment purpose. And for this RESTful APIs, once we started with work with, for example, KeyPair, we can bring the KeyPair card to contain uh, crypto currencies. Uh, for our customers, they can use this you know, cold wallet as a payment process, but it's a little bit different with uh, Fusex. Um, but our project is focusing on you know, creating a payment, crypto-based payment processing service. So we, trying to, we are trying to get all the coins, not only for Bitcoin, not only for Ethereum, major coins. Of course, there are so many companies uh, trying to do that, but we are focusing on even you know, ICO project to bring them and taking them out of their own project, I mean platform. For example, you know, one of the example is a SEDEX, the diamond trading platform. Uh, we take that you know, SEDEX coin into a wallet and you know, utilize that coin to be payable in any way. So yeah, by doing that, we can create a more, you know, better payment environment. Great. Thanks for all your opinion. Allow me to finalize this. Payment, it is necessary. But when we think about the exchanges, we change all the crypto to fiat. So we are trying to take care of that and shorten the process. So give them the conveniency of using crypto. But let me give you one example. 50 million population in Korea. You all know that Korea is really hot with the crypto. Do you know how many of us owns crypto coin? Only 4 million. That's the market size that we are dealing with. He's really right about it. Market penetration is really difficult because no one has it. If you go around the world, not many people own the cryptocurrency. We all heard about it. So future payment, we must be friendly with the cryptocurrency, with the public. So I hope each one of you guys do your best and spread it around. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.